Researchers at the University of Nottingham believe they have identified the first confirmed coronavirus death in the UK. You can see just down here, this is the first patient that we were able to identify in our look back study. So this was identified on the 21st of February. The 75-year-old woman, known as Patient 1, tested positive for coronavirus in hospital on February 21st. She died on March 3rd, two days before the UK announced its first official coronavirus casualty. We think that the, the person that we've identified, the, the first sample on the 21st of February, was certainly the first uh, described community case of, of infection, and unfortunately for that person, they also died. Uh, and so we also know that to be the first uh, death that's been recorded through, through coronavirus. Virologists identified the patient by performing coronavirus tests on samples collected in hospital during the early stages of the outbreak. They were then able to sequence the genetic material of the virus to build a clearer picture of the chains of transmission in Nottingham at the time. So we had samples going back to the start of the outbreak in January. And we were able to screen those samples for the presence of coronavirus and that tells us when the virus first appeared in our hospital here. But we were also then able to sequence those viruses to try and get a handle and to try and understand how those uh, viruses were circulating in the early stages of the outbreak. And it's been pretty fascinating what we found out. So our first case in this hospital appeared on the 21st of February. So that was quite a bit later than we expected. Now that's somebody who's admitted to hospital who's ill and therefore we'd expect them to have caught the virus probably two weeks or so before that. So we're looking at that virus, that person, being infected at the early part of February. At the time, testing for coronavirus in England was limited to people returning from high-risk areas, or those who had been in contact with someone infected with the virus. Professor Jonathan Ball believes, in Nottingham at least, the coronavirus was well and truly in circulation by early February, and further testing at this point could have identified more cases and ultimately saved lives. We estimate, and, and others have estimated, that for every person who turned up in hospital, there's probably 100, maybe 120 other people who are infected who didn't turn up to hospital. So, so we've identified eight or so cases in those early stages before wide-scale testing. So that's almost a thousand community cases that we, we just had no idea about. Uh, and so I think it, it, it's been very exciting and very informative, uh, but also very frustrating because we know that if we had wide-scale testing early on in the outbreak, that we could have impacted on the spread of that virus and hopefully reduced the number of people who ended up getting ill and having to go into hospital and unfortunately dying. The study was born from work underway by the COVID-19 Genomics UK Consortium, a collaborative effort between universities and research institutes to sequence and analyse the genetic code of different strains of coronavirus, thereby creating an in-depth picture of the spread of the infection across the UK. In particular, what strains are out there and, and how their frequency is changing, and how these viruses are spreading and invading different populations. The Sun went inside the sequencing centre at Nottingham University to find out how the world-leading research works. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, the process is, is fairly simple. It's quite a, an efficient pipeline. Samples are identified and tested in the diagnostic lab. As soon as they identify a positive sample, we're able to take that sample. It comes to this lab where it's processed to extract the pure genetic material needed for DNA sequencing. The virus has got an RNA genome, so it's a particular type of genome. We can't really do very much with that, and so we have to change it into a usable version, and we know that as DNA. And that's the same uh, stuff that's in all of our cells. It's, it's basically our, our genome. It's, it's, the, it's the stuff of life, as it were. You have to strip away all the, all the extra proteins uh, and detritus in the swab sample, get rid of everything and you're just left with the genetic material of the virus. Once the virus's DNA has been extracted, it's taken upstairs to the university's genome sequencing lab. There, it's processed from analogue DNA into a digital code which can be analysed by researchers in the UK and around the world. The way we are sequencing uh, here predominantly is using this sequencing platform, the Gridiron, and the way it works is it threads DNA through tiny nanopores. As the DNA threads through these tiny little nanopores, uh, each base, each letter of the DNA has a slightly different shape. Uh, and we're able to monitor a change in current 
uh, uh, as the DNA passes through the nanopore, and we can decode that signal into the letters uh, of the virus genome. So here we are, where we get this light green, that's DNA being sequenced. Within about an hour to two hours, um, depending on the number of samples that we have on here, we would have sufficient data to, to be able to work out the sequence of that viral genome. Speed is important. The faster the data is available, the faster it can be acted on. We want to know whether the virus is spreading from patient to patient in the hospital, um, or whether different patients are coming in from outside with the virus. Now what we can do by sequencing the virus is we, we can't say for sure that two patients have exactly the same virus. But what we can do is say, no, these two patients who are in beds next to one another have different forms of the virus, and so they weren't infecting each other in hospital. Uh, and this has been really useful to help uh, hospitals in tracking potential routes of, of transmission, so of spread in the hospitals and helping to make the hospitals uh, and, and the way they're working safer. Finally, the sequences are sent back to Professor Ball and his team to analyse. They're also uploaded to an online database, which builds a cohesive, multicoloured picture of the coronavirus infection across the UK. Each of the colours in these dots represents a different strain of coronavirus. By comparing the prevalence of the various genomes in different areas, authorities can decide how best to act to contain outbreaks. You can hopefully try and work out if there are particular risks associated with introduction of viruses into communities, or whether there are particular hotspots of virus which are leading to uh, spread of the virus to other places. So for example, let's say we have a lot of export of London viruses or, or viruses that are circulating in one particular geographical location. If we see those spring up at lots of other parts in the United Kingdom, for example, we know that we, we might have to look at ways of intervening and trying to reduce those spread. So it's really a having a handle on what viruses there are, where they are, and more importantly, where they're going to. It's hoped the wealth of data can help mitigate the consequences of a second wave of infection. If you can identify virus as it's circulating in the community, you can hopefully control it better, and that means that fewer people end up needing to go to hospital. And so the fact that we're now doing more testing out in the community is a good thing. The fact that they're trying to also uh, do lots more and more efficient track and trace means that as you see virus infections out in the community, you can hopefully isolate those individuals and stop that virus taking over. And that's the only way that we're going to prevent a, a, a significant second wave.